Namaste everyone. Alright, today we're going to talk a little bit more about Nakshatra Basics. I'll read you this quote from Vasishta Yoga. This is what Vasishta told Lord Rama when he was learning. Conditioning alone is the mind which ceases when inquired into. That's what the mind is. The mind is our conditioning. And the moon is the mind. So the moon in astrology is a predominant planet for revealing the conditioning of our karma, our sanskaras. Sanskaras, sanskara is a Sanskrit word that means impressions. I, if I've been, you know, eating meat every day for my whole life, I have the sanskaras to eat more meat, the impression of just eating more meat. Every time we do an action, it creates an impression. And that's very, very important. That impression is like this residual thing. That's what karma is. And that and then the mind or the, the soul, the next time it goes to act, it is now colored by those previous impressions. So it's more likely to do that or it's more likely to just not be able to act free as a result of that coloring of the mind, those impressions, those sanskaras. That's what really what yoga and spirituality is about. But to plug that in and connect that to what you know of astrology, the moon is the planet of the mind and the conditioning. And literally where we get the word moon mind and mankind all comes from the Sanskrit root manas. So of course the moon is one of the key planets for the nakshatras because the moon is what creates the nakshatras, the lunar zodiac. Through its, you know, each month it goes, it spends, takes about 27 to 28 days to go through the zodiac. So that's why it spends one night with each, with each of the stars every, you know, one star for every 27 days. Now the moon, your moon nakshatra in India is called your Janma nakshatra, or your, your birth star, your birth sign. So in India, they don't ask you your sun sign, or unless in, maybe in modern days, but traditionally they would ask you what your sign is. You would tell them your moon nakshatra, like I would tell them I'm an Ardra moon, um, because that's where my moon was born when I was, was when I was born. Remember, Jan, Ja means born. Remember how we told you how Prajapati is the foremost lord of the born, right? So, born, your born star, Janma. What, what was born, you know? Um, so it's important just to know those terms. And then, um, you know, again, the moon, nakshatra, is the most popular one, but we're gonna learn about a lot of other ones. But yeah, it is a very crucial nakshatra to read for understanding the personality of the native and how they're, again, how they're, what kind of impressions or sanskaras this native is holding. So that's why I say that the moon nakshatra sets the tone of the native's personality, and then it also sets up the vimshatari dashas for the native, of course, as well, which, again, the, the dashas are how things grow and unfold. And like I've said in previous videos, and we'll say more, the sun and the 12 sign zodiac is for the concrete, black or white side of karma. Yes or no, are you an astrologer or not? Are you gonna marry or not? That's the rashis and the sun the moon and the nakshatras are more the subjective side of life. The, um, the sun is objective, the rashis, the moon and the nakshatras are subjective. It's lunar, it's about, again, so it's more about how things grow. The nakshatras are really what you want to look at for how things are going to grow in someone's life, how one's personality is going to be, how one gets their needs met, and again, like how, the, how things grow, how things unfold, like dashas, you know? Um, as the Jama Nakshatra, whatever that star is, what is born and what is growing in this life is that star. You see? Um, like again, I'm a Ardra Nakshatra and Ardra is related to Rudra, Shiva, and I, I got into a Shiva yoga tradition very early on without really even seeking it. It found me. Um, and, you know, uh, th this is just kind of like, I, this is the only example I could think of. Um, or my teacher Ernst says a Mula Nakshatra. That's a very deep, really, really deep star. So he's everything. He's so deep. You know the way things grow and unfold in his life. Whatever. You'll you'll see more of that. Um, and from every other Nakshatra, from from the Moon Nakshatra, every other Nakshatra becomes one of nine types. And there's three sets of those nine. And we're gonna go into that, like Sampat, Vipat, whatever. And um, and things will flow accordingly as a result of that. We'll go into that more. Um, and then you really want to, now, of course, 
the moon is a big deal, but people kind of almost overemphasize the moon. You really got to read all the grahas and all the nakshatras to see the bigger picture. Um, and then, like it says here, any of these 27 stars will express a certain set of qualities, like light and swift for Ashwini, or cruel and violent for Barani. And when a planet is afflicted in that star, when there's an afflicted graha, it expresses the negative qualities of what we're going to cover for that star. But when it's a strong and auspicious quality in a uh, star planet, when it's like an auspicious graha and it's in that nakshatra, the more positive qualities will be expressed. So you'll see when I give the examples, um, okay, right off the top of my head, like uh, Rohini is a nakshatra of growth, popularity. Um, if you have like afflicted planets, like I talked about how um, how Larry David had afflicted planets there, and so he had a shame, he had shame things with popularity, you know? And I talked about how or, uh, Lance Armstrong has Saturn in Rohini, so disease, cancer was able to grow a lot in his case, but uh, then if the planet's very strong and positive, like Mercury and Rohini, we talked about how many famous sports athletes have that. So, you know, when you give the auspicious planet, it's showing the good qualities. An afflicted planet showing the negative. Now, what's interesting is you can use normal avashtas in the other conditions. So, like I said, conditioning alone is the mind. Well, we have a word for that. Avashta means condition. So, every, so I'm going to be teaching you guys the avashtas. And everything you already know about reading Avashtas that you might learn in my Jyotish course or through other teachers, you'll just read a planet. If, if that planet, say Venus, is in uh, Gemini and it's in a good Avashta, then it's doing well. And then you look at the nakshatra that's behind that and you say, okay, then the nakshatra is going to go well too. Now, of course, there's other thing, other techniques we use, but that's a technique that I've never, I've kind of not seen anyone else use. It's not really any books, but I found it to work really, really well. So that's why I'm going to be teaching that a lot as well as these other techniques, but that's one of the main foundational principles I want you guys to have in this course is that, so basically just start with looking at any time there's an exalted planet, look at what nakshatra it's in and that's going to show you the healthy, good side of that nakshatra and then look at a debilitated planet and that's going to show you the negative sides of that nakshatra. Um, and then that's what I mean by here. We're going to see these qualities as we go and we're going to see, we're going to learn how to see if a graha is afflicted or not. And then one more point, the most important nakshatras are the self factors, which of course the moon, we always relate that, we always look at that, but self factors depend on, are different for each chart and they depend on, you know, it's the graha that determines who the person is. So the graha's placements will show the sanskaras and conditioning of that native, the self factor planets are going to show that the most for the native self. So really we're going to learn to look a lot at the Lagna Lord, the sun, the Atmakaraka, the moon, or even K2. Uh, really, it kind of depends on what's the strongest of these. And um, it does seem like the Lagnesh, the Lagna Lord, is the most important and is definitely more important than the Lagna. And then next is either the stronger of the sun or moon, and then next would be the Atmakaraka or K2 star. But again, it really depends on the strength of each of these planets. So if like the Atmakaraka is in Mula Tricona and the Lagna Lord is debilitated, we might put more emphasis on the Atmakaraka Nakshatra. All right, hope that helps you guys. Um, so what you're learning in this course is you are learning to read the karmic condition of the native's mind. And uh, and again, it you this is more of an advanced course. You do need to just be good at astrology in general to get the most out of this course. And you need to know your signs and Rashis and all that stuff. And the more you know that, then you can plug these Nakshatras in after the fact. Um, Alright, thanks you guys.